So we're calling this a meeting to order. It's an emergency meeting of the school committee so we can um, address the COVID-19 um, guidelines set out by the uh, governor of Massachusetts. And Jason, do you have some commissioner I do. comments from today? I do, yep, I have some updates um, on from the commissioner. Uh, do you want to start with the handbook, Jane, and go through the changes, or do you want to start with the, the general updates? Which would you prefer? General update, please. Okay. Um, so um, we met with the Commissioner of Education today at 3 o'clock, and he shared some updates on uh, a couple of different fronts. The first uh, was around graduation. And uh, for all intents and purposes, we can have a normal graduation this year. We will not need to do pods. We will not need to do six tickets. Um, essentially, um, it, you know, providing it's outdoors, of course, which, which we do. Uh, outdoor graduations, uh, attend only attendees and staff are not required to wear masks and are encouraged to distance from individuals not in their household as feasible. Uh, attendees are encouraged to wear face coverings if they're not vaccinated. We can hand the graduates their diplomas this year uh, and our graduation facilities only need uh, to clean high touch surfaces and shared objects uh, once per day. Uh, so no special cleaning needs to be done either. Um, so that is some good news. We will not need yeah. to picketing and potting and all of those other things. And we can see our graduates faces and hand them their diplomas. Awesome. So that is some great news. Um, Karen, do you want to give a very quick uh, update on the clinics? Hi, on Monday the 24th, we'll be holding um, a vaccine clinic at the high school. And then on June 1st, we'll be having one at the middle school. Wow, that's awesome. So far, we have about 60 kids signed up for the high school out of 72 slots. The middle school, I'm waiting for the link um, from the collaborative that is putting it on. Um, so I can send that out to the middle school parents. And I assume we'll have the same clinic dates three weeks later? I thought we were having them at the school. Colleen um, from the Board of Health thought that they would be going to Oxbridge. So I oh, don't okay. know. Okay. Um, All right. But I assume the families will be told what to do for the second shot. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. The, the appointments will be booked the day of the first shot. Excellent. For, Good. Okay. And Jane, seniors will be notified tomorrow. Um, after we update all of our information, we have a meeting tomorrow morning. Um, we are also trying uh, the day of the senior send off uh, to do kind of a small in kind of around the district parade thing uh, with with the students as well. I know that's something that they really wanted to do. So we've been working with the chief to put that together. Um, so we'll have an update for that, too. So we're trying still to get in the things we can while keeping, you know, Everybody's safe and moving forward. Great. So some okay. great news here. Um, all right, um, Karen, do you wanna walk through the changes in the handbook? And everybody should have gotten an email um, <clears throat> this afternoon at about 3.30. Yep, Sarah, you probably didn't see it, but. No, I saw it. Okay. I reviewed it. Okay. So the first change is in um, item number four, classroom procedures, protocols, sharing of items is now allowed and basically they just need to be cleaned once a day or when visibly soiled. There were in section five, um, science courses and laboratory work, there was a bullet point that I took out because it talked about disinfecting shared equipment, which we don't need to do um, in between use. And also um, there were a couple of things in regular sharing of equipment that I took out. 
Um, the last bullet point, I change that to once a day instead of before and after each use. Um, with the number six, the um, COVID exposure or positive test, uh, with because the transmission is so significantly reduced outdoors that during recess, unless someone is having sustained close contact with a positive individual, if you have like a couple of kids huddling together for the recess, that would probably be the only time that they would need to be quarantined. So it would only be if it's necessary. Otherwise, um, they would not need to be quarantined if they're in outdoor recess. And we learned today too, I was waiting just uh, Karen for that part to share um, because it isn't finalized yet, but that the uh, commissioner's health team is working on eliminating any quarantine and any uh, contact tracing for recess. So that's new. That, um, so we, I'm, I'm sharing that because we will probably have to modify this again. <laughs> but he's waiting for language uh, this week, but this will suffice for now. Yeah. In the face covering section number seven, um, in the school committee policy EBCFA face mask, I removed on school grounds and um, added masks are not required when outdoors during recess, phys physical education, youth sports, and outdoor learning environments. Adults must continue to wear masks outdoors if distancing cannot be maintained. And then there was just a couple other places where instead of at school, I changed it to in school buildings and for the staff added again and on school grounds if the distancing cannot be maintained. Does anybody have any questions for Karen? I will entertain a motion to approve those um, changes. So moved. Tara. Moved by Tara. Is there a second? Amanda, second. I'm seconded by Amanda. Is there any uh, discussion? Did we make any changes um, to who the kids are able to play with at recess, or I know that there's been cycling um, through playground equipment and you're saying it doesn't have to be that way anymore, but are they, are they going to be able to expand um, their recess groups from class to grade level, or is it still going to be by class? I think until they eliminate the contact tracing, um, it could be difficult um, if you have someone that maybe is not familiar with all the kids in the grade. Mm. But I, if we're not contact tracing in the near future at recess, then yeah, they can. <clears throat> My guess is they probably have schedules and and plans set that the you know kids are knowing yeah. the rules and for one more month of knowing the rules I think we're probably good. Um, okay. Anyone else? Any other questions? Discussion? I just have one other question, and it's probably more general from what we're doing right now. But is anyone else confused by because I've gone I've definitely gone with the flow with all of this wear a mask, social distance, and, and, but right now the CDC guideline is if you are not vaccinated, they're recommending you still, wear, you a still mask. wear a mask. So why are we taking away the mask wearing for kids when we know they're not vaccinated outside? When the kids are not vaccinated, but in the CDC guideline is if you are that it's, it's a recommendation, not a requirement, but 
we clearly kids can't have them yet when we're talking recess age anyway. The CDC has said that um, the transmission outdoors is less than 10%, and I've heard as low as under 1%. So being outdoors in and of itself um, is extremely helpful in preventing the spread. So that is um, the only thing I can think of as far as Desi saying this, um, because you're right, it is different than what the CDC is saying. Yeah, well, the CDC is also saying you can do certain outdoor things without a mask, even if you're not on, um, yeah. not vaccinated, like you can walk, run, bike outdoors without a mask. So even their, even their outdoor guidelines are are very confusing. If you've looked at them, they have that, you know, the, the red things you can do, the yellow things that, ooh, and then the red, you know, wear your mask type of thing. So um, I think, I think they're, I think sadly the guidelines are, are just that guidelines. And I think we have to make decisions that um, work for our community. And the other thing that I'll say to the people in the community who may view this later um, is you, uh, many people have had patience with us through this process and you need to continue to just because the governor makes a, does a press release and issues new guidelines doesn't mean that policies automatically change. Those are guidelines. They're not policies. Um, and we're not attempting to be punitive to anybody in any way. We're just attempting to do what we have always done. And that is try to be the sa as safe as we possibly can be for the students and the staff that are in our care. <coughs> Okay, anybody else? All those in favor of the proposed changes to our policies and guidelines, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Any abstention? Okay. Uh, MIAA changed its rulings. We did not have any sports policies that I know of, did we? No, instead we included in the updated language youth sports. Yeah. To, the, to the masking piece. So that would actually cover that issue. So we tried to, uh, that was the new language that Karen had added. Yeah. So we, we would okay. be covered there. Okay. So, so Tara, you can go and take everybody's mask off. <laughs> Woo we're going to email everybody, uh, the, the school community now, and um, <clears throat> also email the leadership team and let them know that these are effective immediately, that they've been approved. All right, any other issues we need to address? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second? Second, Carrie. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we're all good. We're all set. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank, you, thank you, thank you.